Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to run a tupi test in R. Let's dive in. This tutorial is basically a continuation of the One Way ANOVA in R video that I posted. I'll leave the link to that below. I suggest that you watch it prior to this video. But if you already watched it or you already know how to do a One Way ANOVA, let's dive into this tutorial. So we have the plant growth data set that we're going to use. Um, we can just, it comes with R so we can read it by using data plant growth. And then we're going to use two libraries, the ggplot2 library and the dubai library. So the ggplot is just for making box plots and different visualizations. And the dubai library is just to uh, do like a summary statistics table. If you want to get more information on plant growth, you can do question mark, question mark, uh, plant growth. Uh, we can take a look at what the box plots are. And basically in this data set, we have three different groups, the control treatment one and treatment two uh, of some kind of plant. I don't think they specify which plant it is. And then the dry weights of those plants. So the idea here is to see uh, with the ANOVA is to see if there's any statistical difference in the means of the groups. And what the two key test is going to help us answer is which of those means are different and which was highest because we want to know Based on what we're seeing here, actually, we already know that treatment two is going to have the highest mean, but this is statistically higher than the rest. So we want to look at which means are different uh, in our Tukey test. And one of the assumptions of the ANOVA is to uh, have normality in our outcome variable, which is weight. So we can do that by using the Shapiro test. I'm just going to go briefly because we already covered this in the previous tutorial. And the p-value is 0.89, which means that uh, we have we can assume a normality. Uh, we can take a look at the histogram, and we can see that also looks like a bell curve. So again, also saying that we have a normal distribution. Then we can use a formal uh, test called the Barlett test to check for equal variances between the groups. This is another assumption of the ANOVA. And we see that we have a p-value of 0.2371. And that means that we have equal variances, so we can, we're can we not violating any of the assumptions. When we run the ANOVA, we see that we have a p-value that's less than 0 0.05. 0 0.05 is the threshold we're using. And we, know, we now know that there's statistically significant differences between the means of the groups, the groups being control treatment one and treatment two. Now, when we run, um, we can run several, another command called LM um, to take a look at the uh, coefficients of the linear model. We can compute summary statistics using this function that will give us the mean, median, and standard deviations. And here we see what the means are by group. Uh, and then we see that treatment two is the highest. And um, we have already seen that in the box plot as well. And now for the Tukey test, we're going to call in the library multcom. And then we're going to feed in this function, glht. We're going to feed it our result from the ANOVA, right? So we had to run the AOV command, so we can feed it our result object. And then here, where it says linear function equals two, and we want to use the Tukey test. So you specify Tukey. There's several tests that you can use. We're just using the Tukey is the most middle of the road test. There's some more conservative tests there, and there's also more lenient tests. Uh, this one is a good one to use. And so we're going to use summary and take a look. So here are the contrasts. So it's saying treatment one minus control, treatment two minus control, treatment two. So every, every single pairwise comparison, right? So these are the means, the difference in means for these pairwise comparisons and their uh, p-values here. So what we see is that the only significant pairwise comparison is that of treatment two versus treatment one. So those had drastically different difference in means. And we can visualize the results here by plotting this two key object result. So if we have a difference in means that is zero, it means that there's no difference in means. That It means that things are the same. So what you're seeing here is this dotted line at zero to show for each of these pairwise comparisons, how close are they to, to being the same, right? So for treatment one and control, uh, the, this is the difference in mean here. 
this dot and then the uh, this range here in parentheses is the confidence intervals around that difference in means. So since they cross the zero line, it means that they're not statistically significant. The same thing for treatment two and control. So the only one that really is far away, the mean is here at uh, 0.7, I think. Let's go back and see. Um, 0.87 practically. So yeah, it's 0.87 is very far away from zero. So this is the difference in means between treatment two and treatment one. And this is the confidence interval. So the confidence interval doesn't even touch, right? The zero line. So that's, that's why you can say that this is statistically significant difference, different, uh, differently from zero. So that's how you interpret that plot. So again, what we conclude is that we found a significant uh, means uh, between the groups and specifically the ones that are very drastically different are the means of treatment two versus treatment one. Quick note about the Tukey test. If you run the ANOVA and you don't get a significant p-value, then you shouldn't run the Tukey test because the Tukey test is a post hoc test that assumes that you had already a significant p-value from the ANOVA, right? So if you run it, it'll give you numbers and it'll give you an output, but it's not going to make sense. will turn out to be wrong. If we go back to our box plot, we're saying treatment two versus treatment one, right? So you can see that their distributions or the interquartile ranges do not overlap very much, if at all, or barely overlap, versus when you look at this distribution's between treatment one and control, they overlap. So it makes sense what the two key test p-value is for these, which is not significant, it's greater than 0.05. That wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Let me know if this tutorial was helpful and what else you'd like to see in other videos. Thank you.